Hello, hello, hello. What life is all about. You've been running around, the searching and light. Wasting your time with all your friends and light. You say, it's not you a living on the top. But now you've given all you've got. At some point you've got to realize That God has more for your life Don't matter what you say See more still is behind Don't wipe all your problems away And she told me to cry you're welcome, sis. <laughs> How's everyone doing this evening? You know what I like when you come in. Please like and share this broadcast. Thank you so much. There's a difference in being and living. It's in the water where life is given. It's the place where you never first again. It's refreshing and there is the wind. It's just welcome, welcome everyone. So take the pieces and make your life all that has been wrong. Just follow me through this song. While we're letting you come in, come on in this evening. Amen. Amen. 
Well, hello, 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 and welcome to another installment of Testify Tuesday. I am your host, Felicia Joseph, and it is a blessing to sit before you today and to share with you how good the Lord has been. When you come on, please like and share this broadcast. Please like and share this broadcast so that we can share this out to someone else so that they too may be blessed by what the Lord has done and what the Lord is doing in our lives. Uh, good evening to everyone. I saw some coming in, but when Waterside is on, I, I, I don't, I, I lose it. Um, what we just heard, we just heard my sis um, re with Waterside. So if you liked what you heard, of course you did. You can hear more. That is a single off of her project, Your Instrument. The whole project is amazing. It is wonderful. It is anointed. It will bless you. So go and pick it up. You can see it on her website, Sarila Music. Um, and you can also get it on your regular uh, streaming sites, Amazon, Google, Apple Music, all of those. Go ahead and support. It will bless you. So a big shout out uh, to my sis Re on tonight. She is on. Um, and Waterside just does something to me because, you know, when you feel like you have taken all of us have that something. All of us have that calming thing, that common sensation. We have our happy place that we like to go to. My sis happens to be water. It calms her. But when we think about it as being the child of Christ, you know, at the water, when they take you to the water to be baptized and they dip you, it is, it is, is a transformation. It is an outward, um, uh, look of what is actually going on inside. It is symbolism of going down one and coming back up, redeemed by the blood of the lamb, changed, made whole, restored, set free. Hallelujah. So when you think about the water side, it should make you happy. It should give you encouragement. It should give you strength. Hallelujah. When you are down and low. So I can go on all day when I tell you so Waterside, you, you know, it calms me after a day like today. I haven't uh, felt very well today and the devil was really fighting. And um, I'm just glad my testimony today is that I'm here. I'm sitting here with you. My testimony today is that the devil tried to stop me. He tried to shut my mouth. He tried to make me cancel Testify Tuesday because I wasn't feeling so good in my body. But God, I thank you for healing. God, I thank you for, for change. God, I thank you for making the broken places fixed, for making the crooked places straight, for those things that weren't feeling quite right in my body. God, I thank you for your healing. You understand? Amen. So there were a few things, um, a few differences in the schedule. Um, I'm guessing that we will reschedule uh, Jubilee uh, another time. Um, I'm guessing something may have happened with her schedule where we weren't able to see. Uh, she wasn't able to be with us on this evening. But when you come in, please, I want you to comment with one thing that you are thankful for. One thing that you are thankful for God for on tonight. Just put it in the comments real, real, real quickly. Just something that you are thankful for. Amen. It's time to share with your sisters and brothers. So it looks like, um, Marcus Lee is thankful that God has given me the patience to deal with ignorant co-worker without losing my cool. <laughs> Jesus. Well, we thank God. We thank God that the Lord has allowed you. That's growth. That's um that's that's growth there. So we 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 agree with that because sometimes, you know, sometimes. I remember I, I actually lost a job. I lost a job when I was younger because I let my temper get the best of me. But thank God we grow. We grow spiritually. God will take a, man, a boy that thinks like a boy and through Christ and through salvation, he becomes a man. Amen. So we thank and praise God 
for that, that you you were able to deal because on, on jobs today, it can be a little tasking. So we thank God with you. What else are we thankful for on this evening? What else are we thankful for, Testify Tuesday crew? Hi, Auntie Tina. I see you on with me. I'm so glad to, to see you sharing with us on this evening. Um, there are a few things I want to go over, and I just want to talk to you guys a little bit on this evening. Um, next week is my week for um, delving in and my personal testimony, and we'll get into that. But there's always something to be thankful for. I thank and praise God because uh, on here where I live in Fernandina Beach in Florida, um, the island is not too... The island is very small. So Amelia Island uh, is a little bit overpopulated. There are a lot of people here. So um, what happens is sometimes it's hard to get around. Like when we're, when rush hour, um, there's lots of accidents, there's lots of fender benders, there's lots of little bumper hits here and there. And sometimes they are hard. Sometimes they are tragic. Sometimes people, you know, get hurt. I thank God that I have not been in such an accident. I thank God that he takes me to work and back home safely. I thank God that when I'm on I-95, uh, north or south, that he takes me and he keeps me safely. I thank God that I haven't run into um, uh, uh a police officer that might have a problem with my nationality and might want to, you know, just start something with me. I thank God that he has encamped his angels around me, my going out and my coming in, that he keeps me safe, that he keeps me protected. I thank God for that on this evening. Amen. Amen. So let's go down here. I see a few. Uh, let's start with, let's start with my sis. So so Reese says, Lord Jesus, it's been a tough day. I'm thankful to find peace after one of the hardest days I've had in a while. Interesting that Waterside was playing. Amen. Amen. God works in mysterious ways. Well, I am so glad that you came and you were able to join us. And I'm so glad that you made it through the hard day. I'm so glad that you are here with us. And no, not only does Jesus love you, but I love you too, says. Now, let's see. Uh, Karen Lee Harris says, thankful to have celebrated my mother's 90th birthday this past June. Amen. That is something to be grateful for. When you hear of how, um, when you read the obituaries here lately, the, the people in them are younger and younger and younger. There's always something going on. So 90 years is wonderful. To still have your mother with you is wonderful. And it is a blessing. And it is something to be thankful for. So I thank you, Testify Tuesday, for sharing. I thank you for that. Now, what I wanted to do, I wanted to do something just a little bit different on this evening. I wanted to talk to you guys about we talk about testimonies a lot and we talk about how we need to share and tell of the goodness of the Lord and tell of how good God has been and tell of the ways that he has blessed us and kept us. And we need to share that with our sisters and our brothers. But a lot of times, um, I'm sorry, I get I get um, sidetracked. I'm sorry. Uh, a lot of times we don't realize that when we come out and we say that we are children of God, when we we profess Christianity and we profess that we are living for the Lord, people watch. They may not always say, hey, I'm watching you. They may not always say, hey, I'm looking at you or, hey, I want to see what's going on with you. But they are watching. They are looking at you, the way that you handle situations, the way that you respond and react to situations, the way that you go through things. Because when we become Christians and followers of Christ, it is hard. We still struggle. We still go through day-to-day -day, um 
daily life, we still face trials, tragedies. We go through hurt. We get angry. We, we still go through all of this. But the difference between us and someone in the world is that we're not walking alone. We're being guided. We are being guided by the Lord. We're being guided by the Holy Ghost. Those of us that are filled with the Holy Ghost, we are being guided. So it shouldn't be so easy for us to um, forget. Like I said in my blog a few weeks ago, we shouldn't have disposable salvation. It shouldn't be so easy for when we go through we should we can call on Jesus at any time when we're feeling stressed, when we're feeling downhearted, when we're feeling um, overwhelmed, when we're feeling like we just can't take anymore, when we're feeling like, you know, Lord, I need help. We have a hotline. We have a main line, don't we? The 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 old saint saying, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. So we can go to the Father. We can make our requests known. We can tell him what we need, what we want, what we desire. We can tell him all. He knows all anyway. So we can confess, God, I can't deal with this. Or God, I'm feeling overwhelmed. Or God, I don't know what to do with this. Or or Lord, I'm in this and don't know which way to go. Help me. So we have a recourse when we're feeling overwhelmed, when we're feeling burdened, when we're feeling like the weight of the world is on our shoulders, we have the burden bearer to help us. So we have to remember this and we have to remember that we are being watched. The world is watching us. There, there's so much bad press and so much um, attention paid when someone in the church, because remember, the church is not the four walls. We are the body. We are the church. So when the world is watching us and they will be easy to say, oh, I knew you wasn't right. Oh, I knew there was a whole bunch of mess. I knew that was hogwash. Look, she got mad and she said a three, four and five letter word. And sometimes these new cuss words are real long or he got mad and and look, he stopped speaking to this person or he was ready to fight this person. I'm just saying all this to say, be mindful when you profess Christ. When you profess Christianity, when you profess that you are a child of the king, when you profess that you have been changed, when you profess that your life is no longer yours, you are being ordered and guided by the Lord, then there should be some action of that. There should be something in your life that's different. There should be something that people can see by watching you and, and by, by being around you that shows it's different. Does that mean you don't struggle? No. Does that mean everything is easy for you? No. Does that mean that everything goes right for you every day? No. Does that mean you're always full of cotton candy, gumdrops, and lollipops? No. But it means when you go through, your struggle, your, your test is different than the unsaved man because you're not alone. So your reaction to things shouldn't be the same. The unsaved man is going to cuss you out uh, talk about you, run you down behind your back, um, try to get his friends and other people to gang up on you with him. That's not how Christ deals with opposition. The Bible tells us they, they hated Christ. They talked about Christ. The <laughs> new cuss words are, <laughs> they talked about Christ. They, they, they scandalized his name. They accused him falsely and did he, even, even when the disciples wanted to fight, even when the disciples were ready to jump to his defense, even when the disciples were ready to, oh, they're going to defend him, Jesus was not about turmoil. He wasn't about fighting and warring. That's not what his message was. So the way he, and he resolved a lot of conflict. He, he, he kept peace and he didn't bring himself down to the level of what other people did, or he didn't let, what I hear a lot is, oh, they just took me there. Child of God, what does that mean? What does they just took me there mean? What, what, what does this mean? What does it mean? I, they took you where? So if they all just jumped and said, woo, we're about to jump to hell. You gonna jump to and say, oh, they just took me there? No, there is a standard that comes with holiness. 
There is a standard that comes with proclaiming and professing man and woman of God. So the things that you used to do, you don't do anymore. You can resolve your conflict. You can tell and express to someone how upset you are without cussing them out. You, you know, you can go to them and speak to them because the, the Bible tells us be angry, but sin not. So being angry or being upset or being in your feelings is not a sin, but the way that you react to it could possibly be. Now, all of that is part of my testimony, because when I tell you, honey, I would make sailors go get dictionaries, thesauruses and everything else trying to figure out how this girl could cuss so bad. But thank you, Jesus. God didn't just change my language when he filled me with the Holy Ghost. He changed my language when he saved me because there was no more. I didn't have to say a cuss word after every three words. And, and now it's crazy when I see people and I hear people do that. It offends me so bad. But I thank God because I know without Christ, there I would be. With, before Christ, there I was. So how can I say that I'm a woman of God, changed, born again, different, and I'm still walking the same way. I'm still talking the same way. I'm still cussing and, and, and doing all these things. That's not right. And they're, they're God, God delivered me. True deliverance, true deliverance being set free from something. Let's just see. What was that movie? The movie Saw, the Saw movies. Anybody, anybody ever see the Saw movies other than me? You know, what was his name? What was his name? Y'all talk to me. What was the, the killer's name in the Saw movies? The ones, you know, you want to play a game. What was his, <laughs> what was his name? But anyway, if you remember his name, you can put it down. But the character, Jigsaw, there it is, Jigsaw. You know how he would chain up people and they would just wake up and find themselves in bondage or, or or chained to a wall or chained to another person or laid out on some operating table in some crazy little dungeon and all they wanted was freedom i mean they would do anything to get their freedom some of them would have to cut off limbs anything to get their freedom so deliverance when you've truly been set free from something when god has taken the desire away from you when god has has freed you completely from it, who then would run back into the bondage? Who would who would run back into what they've been delivered from? <laughs> All right, Re. All right. <laughs> I'ma share that anyway. All right. We don't watch them demonic movies. Amen, mother. Amen. <laughs> but anyway, I'm saying that to, to make a point. I haven't been I haven't been delivered from from scary movies yet, but that's what I'm saying. When you're delivered, it shows. And I'm not talking about being delivered. We we not going there. I'm talking about true godly deliverance. When you have been changed, your life shows it. You don't have to go around telling everybody I've been delivered because those people who knew you when and know you now will see the change that God has made and brought over your life, amen? So when you give your testimony, it will be clear how much God has delivered you, how much God has done for you, how God has broken the chains of whatever it was, because my struggle isn't your struggle. Your struggle isn't Sister Tofoot's struggle. Sister Tofoot's struggle isn't Brother Knockneed's struggle. We all have our own struggles. So I'm just letting you guys know um, that you have to be careful. You have to be careful when you when you um, are professing Christianity, when you are being that light, when people start to look at you and watch your life, you have to be careful that you are always being the light of the Lord on this earth. Amen. So that's all. It was just a little bit of it. Uh, and this is, and I'm speaking to myself too, because no, I may not curse anymore. 
No, I may not struggle with some of the things that I used to struggle with, but there are still things that I can change. God is still working on us. Save, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. God still convicts me because sometimes I don't say things with the right tone. Sometimes I'm a bit sharp. You know, some God is still working on filing out off them edges, filing my edges down to make them smoother. You know, sometimes I can I cannot be as understanding as I need to. God has to convict me on how to speak to my sisters and my brothers sometimes. Sometimes, you know, these are all things. But like I said, my struggle isn't yours. We all struggle with something. All I'm saying is keep it before the Lord. Keep it asking the Lord to shine his light down on you. Keep asking the Lord to make these things plain for you, things that you might uh, need to fix. Because if you ask the Lord, he will answer. You know how sometimes you can talk to your friends and you can ask them, girl, you think I look all right in this dress? Girl, you think this shirt make me look fat? Girl, do you think I should wear a short haircut or a long haircut? Your friends sometimes not gonna wanna hurt your feelings. And then there are those friends that'll just just tell you. But sometimes they're going to take your your feelings into consideration. So you have to think, is this person telling me the God's honest truth or is this person trying to spare my feelings or is this person, you know, not wanting to offend me? But that's not how that's not how the Lord works. When you go to him and you ask him to show you yourself to show you what it is about you that's unpleasing to him, he is going to do just that. It's not going to be sugar-coated. It's not going to be baby-dolled. It's not going to be dressed up with a bow around it. It's going to be the unadulterated truth. He is going to tell you and answer you with the truth. So if there is anything you're struggling with, take it to Jesus. Take it to Jesus. Jesus knows all and can fix and control all. Amen. So that's all I wanted to say on this evening. Um, Like I said, I'm not going to hold you guys long. Um, I'm so glad for all of you that have come in and um, shared with me on today. I want to please encourage you to visit the website that is FeliciaJoseph.com. And while you're there, please subscribe. Give me one second. Please subscribe. By subscribing, you leave me your email address so that I can make you aware of upcoming events, um, things that may drop on my calendar last minute. If I'm going to be in your area, if new music is dropping, when the cookbook is coming out, you know, all these things. I want to also take this time to thank everyone who is a supporter to me, everyone who is um, praying for me, everyone who is laying before the Lord, calling my name to Jesus, supporting my ministry. I thank you. Testify Tuesday crew, you are the absolute best. I thank you for sharing. I thank you for coming on and being with me on Tuesdays. It does mean the world to me. Now for the rest of the week, tomorrow I will be on, um, the I Am a Superwoman radio network with Tina Hobson uh, from her Facebook page at eight o'clock. We will be talking with the DeFreeze family. And for all of you who don't know, please, please um, log on to that interview. Please come on to uh, Tina Hobson's page. It will be Facebook Live because this is a tragedy that happened. And this topic needs a lot of light shown upon it. So we need to be supportive to this family. We need to um, be made aware of the situation. What has taken place in Ohio? What is going on? We need to Excuse me. And I said tomorrow and it's not tomorrow. It's Friday. It's not tomorrow. I do apologize. It's going to be Friday evening on um, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So eight o'clock Eastern Time. And I will be talking with the parents of a beautiful little angel that was taken away from us way too soon. We'll be getting more details on what happened and what the family is doing, not only to honor her, but to bring 
a light and bring awareness to the situations that are happening. So I implore you, please testify Tuesday. Please join me on Friday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, uh, Tina Hobson herself, myself, and uh, the Corinth, another um, independent artist, will be talking with the family and we're talking um, about an upcoming event that I want you all to come on in and be of support to. So keep that on your calendars, keep that in mind. Then also Miss Superwoman is busy. Then the whole month of September, Miss Tina is having Sisters Sharpen Sisters. Um, and it's a panel of us, uh, a few of us ladies of internet media that are gonna come together and just ask each other questions, you know, that we've all wanted to ask before, just to have a good old time girl talk, if you will. Um, so you don't want to miss that. That's going to be every Wednesday night in September. All right. And that's going to be at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, I need you guys to please support JESUS. It is still out. Um, uh, please, if you have not purchased it, you can on Apple Music, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon. Um, it's on Pandora. It's on iHeartRadio. It's on Spotify. So there are many different places that you can go to. Hi, Stephanie. How you doing, sis? Um, where you can go to um, support and, and be a blessing. The album is coming together and you guys will not be disappointed. Um, we are going to come with you soon because we have a few things. Like I said, we have the Testify Tuesday mugs. We have the Testify Tuesday t-shirts. Um, and we also have the Anointed Songbird mugs and t-shirts too. So all that information will be on my website in the next few weeks where you can just go there to make your purchases. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that. So again, if you love the opening song, Waterside by Re, you can also purchase that CD, your instrument, also on all the uh, outlets that I just named, as well as her website, serilamusic.com. You will not um, be disappointed. So let me know about the album so I can bubble. Yes, ma'am, I sure will. I absolutely will. Um, now, if all hearts and minds, like I said, I wasn't going to hold you guys too long today, and we will reschedule with Jubilee at another time. Um, if all hearts and minds are clear, we're going to end Testify Tuesday in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you and we praise you for yet another opportunity that we had to come together through social media, God, to tell of your goodness, to share, to lift up your name, to just talk about you, how great you are, how kind you are, how powerful you are, God. You are all God, and we worship and praise you, and we give you thanks. God, we ask you to go with everyone under the sound of my voice, God, that is watching live or that will watch the repeats, God. God, we ask you to bless them, touch them in a mighty way, God. God, you know what they stand in need of, God. You know what needs to be done, and you are the only one who can do it, God. So in the precious name of Jesus, God, we lift everyone up to you, God. We ask for strength where there is weakness. We ask for mending where there is brokenness. We ask for comfort where there is hurt, oh God. God, you know what's going on, God. If the body needs to be healed, we ask right now in the name of Jesus, that you do so miraculous healing God that when it is done there will be no question that it was you and only you who could have done it God we give you praise we give you honor we give you glory God we lift up your name because you are worthy of it all God we say thank you God we ask you to continue to go with us God on this week God help us continue to lift up your name help us to be more mindful God of how we represent you, God. Help us to win souls, God. It is the last and evil day. So God, we ask you to endow us with your power, God, with your mindset, God, so that we can win the kingdom for you. We thank you, God, for victory in advance and we go in peace, God, with you, in you, through you, knowing we cannot fail with you on our side. So we say, thank you, Jesus and amen. Amen. 
All right, Testify Tuesday crew, we'll see you right here next week, 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, for Testify Tuesday with me, Felicia Joseph, where we'll be delving into my testimony. Amen. Amen. Thanks again for coming. Hello. Oh, my sister, everybody. My sister, Natasha Joseph, is on. Hi, sissy. Um, I just wanted to take the time to say hi to my sister. That's my blood sister, y'all. <laughs> um, and we'll be talking because like I told you, I'll be in Alabama. I'll be in Alabama in a few months. So I'm gonna call you when I get off. But the rest of you, thank you so much for coming in and tuning in and for your support. You guys keep me in prayer and I'll keep you in prayer. Amen, Re, you do the same. Thank you all for coming in. Aww, Auntie Tina said hi to my sister. <laughs> Thank you all for coming in and being with me and we will see you all again next week. God bless you all. Good night, everyone.